This is Toby. This is Toby's gameplay. Notice how Toby can keep the ball on his car consistently and move it where he wants. What's his rank? Dribbling is one of the hardest essential skills of basic Rocket League gameplay. Pretty much anyone is capable of tapping the ball a couple times as it rolls on the ground to line it up toward the goal, but actually carrying it on your car is extremely difficult, especially carrying it toward a specific direction that you want, at a specific speed, at very specific angles, and jumping and turning and flipping at specific times, and you get the point. But in this video, I'm going to go over the specific training regimen that will help you learn this very difficult mechanic all the way from this level to this level. Alright, let's get started. Dribbling can be broken down into five main skills within it. There's gas, boost, turning, catching, and jumping. This is also the exact order I suggest you practice these skills in. You could also argue flicking is one of those skills within dribbling, but it's so complex that it needs an entirely different video, so if you want to see my flick tutorial, that'll be in the description. The first skill to master is the gas, or the right trigger button on your controller, or W if you're on keyboard. This one is so simple, and you probably don't even need to put that much practice into it, but it's important that you don't skip it because the skills following it build off of each other. To go along with this video, I have a training pack that you should use to practice these skills individually. If you don't use this training pack and you use free play instead, that's basically equivalent to jumping straight into step 3 in this tutorial, which is where things get really complicated. And you don't want to do that, trust me. The first shot in this pack is the ball just resting on your head, and you carry it all the way across the field into the other goal. Super simple. Also, kind of boring. <laughs> When you do this first shot, I don't want you to use any other button on your controller. You can literally take your left hand off of it if you want. The purpose is to carry the ball all the way to the goal with only using the gas. No need to turn or boost or hit the brakes or anything. This is very basic, so hopefully you can do that. Another quick thing to keep in mind is that your car choice isn't a big deal when you're learning how to dribble. I personally first learned how to dribble with the Dominus, but now obviously I use the Octane, and the skills I learned with the Dominus translated over to every other car just fine. So you don't need to worry about which car you choose. If you can successfully do this five times in a row, you're ready for the next step. Incorporating boost and brakes at will is definitely a lot harder than only using the gas, but it's still really easy in the big picture, so you may be able to get a hang of this on your first day of practicing still. Going back to the training pack, you'll use the first shot in the pack for this as well. But this time, instead of just going straight toward the goal using boost, you're going to speed up by feathering your boost at the start, and then you'll tap the brakes at midfield to slow it down a little bit, and then you'll speed up again with boost to put it into the goal. Again, no turning necessary. When you tap the brakes at midfield, do not hold it down. That'll just send the ball flying forward. Just lightly tap it, only for a brief moment. If you do it any longer, the ball is going to go way out of your control. The point of using the brakes in this drill is not necessarily to get good at actually using them competitively, but instead to get used to how jarring it is when you do use them. It's really natural for us in real dribbles in game to want to hit the brakes when the ball is getting a little too far behind our car. But doing that is clearly way more powerful than you think. So the purpose of using the brakes in this drill is to train your brain to not enjoy using them, so you can eliminate that bad habit before it even starts. Instead, in real situations to slow down, you should simply stop using boost and gas for a moment. You should only use the brakes if the ball is way behind your car in a situation like this. Other than that, you shouldn't use the brakes in a real dribble. Also, if you're needing to like hold down reverse to maintain control at one point in the middle, then you're not doing it right. It should just be a little tap or two of the brakes at midfield and then speeding up again with boost. But again, for this stage, once you can do this five times in a row, you're about ready to move on to the next one. Okay, this is the hardest jump in difficulty because you're basically adding an entire dimension to everything you've been doing. To get used to turning, you kind of have to go back a step in the previous skills to make it easier on yourself. In real games, you'd be using all of these skills at once to keep control, but obviously that's just not possible if you haven't gotten the basics down. So in shot number two in this pack, it's pretty much the same thing except the ball is slightly on the side of your car, so you can't go in a straight line. At first when you're doing this, don't even worry about the goal, just try and keep the ball on your car for as long as possible. But the other big thing is, I don't want you to use any boosts or the brakes at all. 
Even though you were just practicing those skills in the previous step, adding this entire dimension is hard enough, so only use the gas in turning for this. Even if you know for a fact that the ball is about to fall off the front, just fight your urge to save it and let it fall down. Just do not press that boost button. What's most important when you're adding the element of turning is that you keep every other complication to a minimum because as I said, adding this second dimension is the hardest part by far. This will take most people many days to get comfortable with. Progress will seem slow and it is, but it's definitely there and if you give it enough time, you will get comfortable with it. But again, just like before, if you can get this in the goal with only gas and turning five times in a row, you're ready to add boost. Adding boost is as simple as feathering some boost into it here and there. Just try and make the ball go a little faster. This is another one of those things that doesn't really have any tips because it's not a skill that suddenly clicks in your brain and makes sense. It's just something that you grind out and get better at over time. Hopefully after you've gotten comfortable with dribbling with only gas, adding boost when needed should be even easier. Once you can do this five times in a row, you're ready to move on to the next skill. Ah, catching. This is where the dribble itself actually starts, and you might be wondering why I didn't put this as the first skill, and that's because if you aren't able to carry the ball on your car yet, you don't really know exactly what's considered a good catch. You know, you don't really know what you're looking for until you're actually able to dribble it yourself. So that's why I put it after learning the carry. In the training pack, shots three through six are all shots that require some sort of pickup. The ball will already be rolling toward you or just be stationary in front of you and you need to pop it up softly and catch it and carry it into the goal. Again, it's very simple. Notice how I'm on ball cam while the ball is rolling towards me, but as soon as I get that touch on the ball, I immediately switch to car cam. This should also be pretty easy to learn compared to learning how to carry the ball itself. They all just require you to pop the ball up and carry it to the goal. That's it. One tip I have for you on this is to try and catch the ball toward the front of your car instead of directly on top. When you catch it on top, the ball tends to bounce on your car more, which makes it harder to keep control. But when you catch it on the front, it doesn't bounce as much and it allows you to start your forward momentum sooner. Also, when you pop it up, it's usually best to just drive into the ball slowly so you don't pop it up too high, but boost immediately after your touch so you can catch up to it and get underneath it. The next four shots in the pack, which are 7 through 10, are ones where the ball is kind of rolling with you or at you from the side. These ones are a little harder because the speed you're driving at during your first touch needs to be even more precise. On the ones where the ball is following you, it's best to try and match the speed of the ball roughly and try and cut in on it from the side. The final six shots of the pack are all ones where the ball is flying at you from the air. These are the hardest types of catches. You need to be really precise with where the ball hits your car in order to get control the fastest. Sometimes when the ball is heading toward you faster than normal, it helps to kind of soften the landing of it by turning with it a little. It just allows you to get control of it faster. What I mean is this is an example of a bad catch because it takes too long to actually get full control. And this is an example of a good catch because it stayed closer to my car all because I softened it by turning with it. Overall, the catch from the air is another thing that you need to do yourself to master it and that's exactly why there's this training pack for it. Even if you catch it and carry it in on the first try, try not to move on to the next shot until you can get a few in a row on it. And that goes for all of them. It helps a ton to be able to do them multiple times in a row and really be in control of the direction you catch it in. After you get comfortable with catching it to where you can catch all of these confidently on the first try, you're ready to move on to the final skill. Here we are, the final skill of dribbling. The reason I put this last is because it sends you off in a nice direction to be able to work on flicks, which requires you to be really consistent at dribbling. So the thing about jumping is you have to be really controlled with where the ball is on your car. For example, if you have the ball just bouncing around all over the place on your car, when you jump, it's not gonna be possible to catch it again before it hits the ground. So when you jump, the ball needs to be on a specific spot in your car so that it's easiest for you to catch it again. For the training pack, you can literally just start it over and do it all again, but adding as many jumps as possible on them. So for the first shot here, you can start by doing just a single jump and then carrying it into the goal. Then you can try it again, but maybe doing a double jump instead. Then maybe doing two double jumps and three and four and so on. Then you move on to the next shot and do the same thing. Once that gets too easy, you start adding flips and spins into it. The point is, once you get comfortable with it, you can do pretty much whatever you want and it'll still be productive practice. 
you can start being creative by implementing these crazy variations with power slide and air dribble pops and all sorts of stuff. No matter what, even though it may take a long time to get here, I think it's safe to say that you can now dribble in Rocket League. Good job, Toby.